Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and this week I'm just going to be continuing on with development on Aquilinox and hopefully getting it a little bit closer to release. It's actually going to be a bit of a short week this week because once again I've got some friends coming from England to visit me at the end of the week and because I've got the videos to do as well this week I'm really only going to have today and tomorrow to work on Aquilinox but I should still hopefully be able to get quite a lot done. So first up this week I've made myself a big to-do list of all of the things that I'd like to get done this week. Probably not going to get them all done because it's quite a big list and these are all pretty big tasks. But uh, I've started off with the easiest one which was to simply add some options for the new sun effects into the options menu. Next up on the list today is to redo these entity pop-up GYs because they were starting to look a little bit messy with all the different component types in here and uh, I wanted to have another go at them. So I've been going through the code for them, I've redone a lot of it, I've got the text all lining up nicely now, and I'm about to start implementing support for components other than just text, so things like health bars and other stuff like that. It is half past twelve and I've just finished work on the next bit of the GUIs, which is this progress bar GUI here, which can be added to the entity info GUIs, and this is going to be used to display things like the health of an entity. So, not the nicest day today, but it has now been five weeks since I planted my radishes, uh, which are now somewhere hidden inside all these flowers. Um, but they should be ready now, and I've actually spotted quite a large one at the back here, so I'm just going to try and take that out now. And there you go! So, that will make a nice addition to my lunch today. This afternoon I've been doing a bit of work with the camera in Aquilinox because I've always found the camera to be a little bit annoying to work with and you always have to worry about zooming in and out and positioning correctly. Uh, so now I've created this default camera position um, which I think is at a nice height and gives you a nice overview of the world uh, without being too far away. You can of course still rotate the camera and you can still zoom in and out but most of the time you can just use this default camera position and not have to worry too much about zooming in and out and uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to play the game. Just finishing off the afternoon today with a bit of modelling and I've been creating this new entity for the game which is going to be a berry bush or a fruit tree or something like that. Um, I basically wanted to create an entity that spawns other entities on it. So for example this tree is going to be spawning these pieces of fruit on it and then these bits of fruit will actually be separate entities that can then fall off the tree and then be eaten by sheep or something like that and I'll probably be adding this into the game sometime next week. It is 10.30, it's a very dark and stormy evening, and I'm just stopping for some dinner now, which, as you can see, is making use of that radish that I harvested earlier. Good morning everyone, it is Wednesday morning and today I'm going to be continuing on with the to-do list and mostly working on biome related things which is something that I've been putting off for a long time now but I really need to get them done and uh, today is of course the last day this week that I can work on Aquilinox because tomorrow I need to start work on the tutorial and the devlog video so I'm going to try and get as much done today as possible. So today I'm mostly going to be working on biomes and to start off the day I've been creating this component here which is basically the environmental preferences of a species. So for example, we've got the biomes that it can live in. This here determines whether it can live in an area where there aren't any biomes. This is the species favorite biome, and these are the species that it likes to have around. So for example, sheep might prefer to live in an area that have birch trees and things like that. So at the moment, I'm just going through and creating this new component and doing all the stuff to do with loading it up from the entity files and stuff like that. Next up today I've created a calculation to determine how happy an entity is with its environment and this takes into account the biomes that it likes to be in and also the different species that it likes to have around it and I've been testing this out in the game with the sheep so the sheep like the grassland biome so as you can see um, this sheep here is pretty happy with its environment but it also likes to have some trees around so if I put these trees near the sheep you can see that it's now even happier with its environment. It is coming up to lunchtime and I've just made one more quick little update before lunch which is to make sure that the calculation for checking how suitable the environment is for the entity only happens um, every now and again instead of every frame because obviously if there are 2000 entities in the world 
then that calculation would be carried out 2,000 times every single frame, which isn't really necessary because the environment isn't going to be changing that quickly. So to do this, I've created a class called ticker, and this takes in the time, which is how often you want it to be updated. And then in the update method, I check if the ticker is active, and then I carry out the calculation. And the ticker will only be active um, once every five seconds, or whatever you put in as the update time. Back to work after lunch now, and the first thing that I'm working on this afternoon is the species information GUI. And you can see that I've now split the bottom bit up into two sections, one for abilities and one for stats. The abilities is going to be things like what effect the species has on the environment, like increases the fertility and stuff like that. And I'm now just working on the layout of the sections. So I've been trying to sort out the layout of the species info GUI, but unfortunately I've come across a bit of a problem with text that goes over multiple lines because the GUI system doesn't really handle it very well, so I think I need to redo some stuff there. But I've left that for now and instead I've been tidying up the biome picker GUI and uh, I've split each bit of text into two parts, one for the name and one for the percentage, just so that they can all be lined up nicely. And I'm just about to add a couple more features to this GUI. Just been doing a little bit more work on the biome picker GUI, so it now shows the altitude of the terrain, uh, which is going to be useful for some species because some species will have altitude requirements for their environment. And it also now says whether it's dry land or underwater, um, which is for when I start adding underwater species. Just been doing a bit more work with the altitude preferences of a species, so now you can see this sheep here, it's pretty happy with its environment because it's got the grass and the trees, but if I move it up to the top of this hill, which also has grass and trees, it's actually no longer very happy because of the altitude, because it prefers lower altitudes. And I forgot to mention earlier, but you can check all the invite, or you will be able to check all the environmental preferences of a species in the species information GUI in the stats section. It is 20 past 10 now, just finishing off for the day, and this evening I've just been creating one more task, which is this happy sheep task here, which is to have more than five sheep in the world that are happy with their environment, and I've just been testing it out to make sure that that works. It is Thursday morning, and today I need to do both of this week's videos, because my friends are coming tomorrow. So, so far today I've been working on this week's behind the scenes devlog video, which I have pretty much finished editing together now. And I'm just about to stop for some lunch, and then this afternoon I will work on this week's tutorial. It is 20 past 2, and this afternoon I've been working on this week's tutorial, which unfortunately is probably not going to be of any interest to any of you, because it's actually tutorial zero, the tutorial about setting up your project in Eclipse, which I never actually made, and I've always just linked to someone else's tutorial, but that tutorial is now a bit outdated, so I've decided to finally make my own. And I've just been making the script for that, and I'm just about to record it. So it's the end of the day now, and I've pretty much got everything done with the videos, just a little bit of editing left to do on the tutorial, but I'm sure I'll find some time to do that over the weekend. Um, and then that will pretty much be it for this week. Hopefully I'll have a bit more time to do some bigger tutorials soon. I know they've been a bit sparse over the last few weeks, but it's just been a, a busy few weeks for me. And next week's not going to be much better, unfortunately. I've got a wedding to go to at the weekend. Um, but after that, after next week, I should be able to get back to my usual schedule and put out some bigger and better tutorials. For this week though, that is it. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.